Elizabeth and I have a surprise for you. The duck that we so affectionately call Shane um, decided that working would be uh, a better thing to do than come on air with me. Whatever. Priorities. And so he told me for 30 minutes I would have to open the Middle University radio show by my lone self. And I was like, that is ridiculous. Why would I do that? when I could have some of my besties come join me. So I have the beloved shoe girl and the beloved Lina here with us today. Say hello, ladies. Hello. hello ladies. <laughs> and if you guys will put yourself online, the beloved Rondon will make you on air as well so they can all enjoy our lovely presence. Thank Woo, you. <laughs> that's the first time I've seen my name up the top. Yay. Look at that, feel mighty, feel proud. And let me change that since we are no longer at the other show. We are at the Minnow University. And for those of you who don't know, typically this show is called Don't Blame Shane, Cubby Told Me to Do So. But today is the Minnow University Radio Takeover. And moving forward, it sounds like this is what we're going to do. We will pick a topic and we will dive into it and depict on what it is, how to explain it, how to better understand it. Yes, the pink is taking over, Rond. Beware. And so it is I, the pink professor. You may call me Miss Elizabeth. I will change my nickname in here. <laughs> I've never wanted to be a teacher, but I think if I was, I would be called Miss Elizabeth. Doesn't that sound like a cubby thing to do? I think so. So we'll run with it. And as you might have seen on my post or Shane's post or Isaiah's post or the MSP Waves post, sounds like we post a lot, but... We are talking about wallets. Since all of you are on Steemit, you might have noticed you get this lovely thing that you claim and it becomes either Steam or SBD in the wallet section. And for some of you who are new, you may not understand what that all means or what in the world are you supposed to be doing with this wallet. Well, just like in the real world, your wallet holds all the funds that you have in two different types of currencies. And with me, I have Chugro, who has done a ton of trading, and Lena, who for the very first time did some, tra some trading, and I would love to hear about your experience. So Lena, talk to me. What kind of trading did you do from the first time? I took advantage of the rather high SBD numbers, and everybody kept saying, oh, this Christmas was great because I had SBD and went up and everything, and and um, GMUX was saying this was the first time that he didn't actually go into debt over Christmas wow. because SBD was so high. Yeah. And I thought, man, I'm, I want to get in on this. I've been I've been on Steemit since May, I believe, and I have never cashed out anything ever. I've just always powered up and kept going. And so I thought, you know what, let me just let me just try. So <laughs> it took me about three hours to figure it out <laughs> with a lot of help from Shane, actually, <laughs> poor Shane. Um, he was trying to do other things and I was DMing him like, wait a minute, this isn't working. How do I do this? <laughs> and he says, okay, Lena, stop. Block trades now. <laughs> so, and he kind of, he literally spelled it out for me, essentially. I wish so, he had recorded it. Then we could have, you know, used it here for one of our lessons. But I always find that the first time you try to do anything is always the hardest because it's all just so new and confusing. And it's like, all right, you grab an address from here and then you post it from there and then you exchange from here. And you're just like, why is there so many steps? It is. And I wish there was some way where you could just SBD to dollars. Boom, you're done. I mean, as it is, I took my SBD into block trades, traded it for Litecoin and then took Litecoin into Coinbase and put that into my um, my account, my bank account that I have stored on Coinbase. And so it was like three different steps and different things to do. And I'm a very one thing to do type of person. One thing is in my head and that's all I can do. And everything else just has to take a back seat until I get that one thing done. Because not many things can go on in this little, in this little space that's called my brain. <laughs> so it took me a long time. I don't blame you. When I heard someone tell me for the first time, just I was like, just walk me through exactly how this works. And he's like, all right, so first you do this, then you do that, then you buy it here, then you train here. And I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, right? <laughs> that is one too many steps. And I was like, really? That's what you guys do every time you trade on there? I have a hard time enough with my BitShares and Open Ledger account that I just do one thing with. <laughs> and I've messed that up more times than I can count. Shoe Girl, what about you? Do you remember the first time you traded and has it become easier over time? Um, yes and no. Um, I haven't actually traded out 
of SBD because like Lena, I've pretty much just powered up and I've also put other money in. So I haven't done the going out thing yet. So I'm not entirely sure. Like, I mean, I would probably go to Bittrex, I would think, and then change it there into something else and then get it out that way. But, um, yeah, I, I haven't tried getting any money out. I'm trying to get more money in. That's my issue at the moment. I want more money in, not out. Very nice. But you have purchased um, SBD with other coins and powered up as well. I have, yes. So I've done Bitcoin was probably, yeah, Bitcoin was the first one. Um, and I think I, well, I either did that through Bitrex or Poloniex. I don't know, whichever one I did it through at the time. But I do remember, like, you had to go in and you had to find the memo and it had to be the right one. And then it's like, oh, I better do a little test first. <laughs> and it did seem quite complicated. And then, like, once I'd done that and then I transferred the rest. And then I've also done it through block trades as well because that seems way easier, even though I'm sure the rate is worse. Yeah. But yeah. I do I do like – like block trades does make it very easy i find nice yeah block trades was very easy it took you st or it took me at least step by step okay this is the memo you put this into this place and you know it every step it said okay now you do this now you do this now you do this and thank god for that <laughs> and now for those of you i who do have know, a cautionary tale though there you go that's um, what i was hoping for yeah okay so there's this like newbie person that I um, found recently and I was talking to him about it and he wanted to send, I think he wanted to send like SBD, I, well, he was using block trades. So I think it was SBD to Steam or something. And um, I said, oh, okay, we'll go here and then get the memo and then stick that in the memo. And then he tried like then going back the other way, but he used the same memo. And I was like, oh, no. no, you can't do that. You need to like put it in differently in Block Trades and that will give you a new one. So then he had to email Block Trades and say, I fucked up. Can I please have my money back? Which <laughs> Block Trades did. But really? it was like, oh, I hadn't wow. even considered that. Like for me, it was just natural. Like if, you, if you're going from one thing to something else, you need to put it in again in Block Trades and get the new memo, whereas he thought you could just use it for everything. So yeah, that's the caution retail. Oh, I see. You can't. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know as well, um, what they're talking about with Block Trades and Coinbase and all these other things, these are also other types of wallet, web-based wallets. And ladies, correct me if I'm wrong because I'm still learning this as we go too. I don't even have a Block Trades account, I don't think. I think I have Coinbase and BitShares. Um, but you don't need a block trades account. You just go onto the website oh, and good. then you put your name in um, or whoever's name in and it gives you a memo and then like that's it. So you, you don't actually have a wallet on block trades. Excellent. Because I think some of them require some personal information from you as well, certain types of wallets. I think I've heard some require like your social security and your personal email and some other things like that. Have you seen any like that? No, but Lexi's right. That's for exchanges. It's not for wallets. You can have as many wallets as you want and you don't really have to give them any information at all. Nice. And Sugar, you actually had a, a quite interesting experience because you have different bank accounts across the world. I have a lot of interesting experiences, Gabby. <laughs> this <laughs> is true, but specifically with trading in crypto and banks, you seem to have a very interesting story and experience with them because apparently not every bank is crypto friendly. No, this is correct. I've had so many issues with banks and exchanges and uh, living in Panama doesn't help either. So basically everybody in the mainstream financial sector views me as some kind of tax avoiding money launderer. And so <laughs> like they're just trying to shut me down all the time. So my first problem that I encountered was, oh, it's going back over a year now. And I had a... Citibank account here in Australia. And I know Citibank is shitty bank and that they're rubbish. <laughs> However, like Citibank in Australia have the best bank account for traveling because you don't pay any fees like on anything and you get um, like free ATM withdrawals. So they like oh, if wow. the bank you're taking the money out of will charge you, like that's out of their control, but they won't charge you. And any Citibank account, oh, sorry, any Citibank ATM anywhere in the world is basically free. So for Aussies, it's awesome. It's the best traveling account 
in Australia and anyone who travels overseas, I would highly recommend getting one. That being said, if you then want to transfer money to a Bitcoin exchange, it's a whole different story. So I like I closed all my other accounts before I left Australia because I was like, well, I don't really need like however three, four or five, however many bank accounts I had here. So I shut them all and just had the Citibank one. So that was mistake number one. And then I started transferring all this money to Bitcoin and then like people from Citibank in Australia are like ringing me up going, what are you doing? Are you trading Bitcoin? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I live overseas now. I'm just like moving it overseas. Anyway, they didn't like it. And they sent me a letter saying, we're shutting your account. So then I had to take all that money out and basically transfer the rest of it into Bitcoin because I had no other accounts to move it to in Australia. I mean, oh, I did send some to my US account. Um, but yeah, so I had no bank account in Australia. And then fast forward a few months and I also had a whole bunch of like share trading accounts in Australia as well. And I thought, well, I better do the right thing, update my address and told them all I was living in Panama. And then it's like, you've got 10 days to close your account because Panama is not within the Australian regulations. Um, like you need to sort this out. And then I was like, well, fuck, I, I have nowhere for the money to go because I don't have a bank account. And that's why I ended up like having to come back in April this year. So basically I bought a ticket to Australia for two days time because I was looking, I was like, there's no way I can sort this out. I have to go back. And I thought I'm not ready to jump on a 24 hour flight tomorrow. I'll do it in two days. So I came back and I opened a bank account which I did send some money to a Bitcoin exchange to the other day, like just a little bit because my sister wanted me to buy her some Bitcoin. So I thought, well, I'll just like transfer it across and see what happens. So I'm waiting to see if my current Australian bank account shuts me down. Then I had another bank account in the UK because I used to live in the UK for a while and I've kind of kept all of them going because I also had shares in the UK. But the UK is really annoying. It's it's very hard to have a bank account there unless you're living in the UK. So basically I've been lying for the last 10 years and using a friend's address just so I can keep that account open. But now they're cracking down on it even more. So I was like, nah, fuck this, like they can all go. So I sold all my UK shares and then I closed, I, I transferred the money from that to, I've told you about Uphold, like the, uh, it's kind of like a banking exchange thing where they trade, where you can buy and sell crypto and you can also ho hold currencies and there's also some precious metals. So I transferred it to that. So that was all good. But um, then I have a Spectra coin card. And then a couple of months ago, Visa started shutting down like all these like Bitcoin Visa cards. So I had one of them and that was like the main way I was spending money because I would just transfer fiat into like Bitcoin or whatever. I'm just using Bitcoin as general crypto here. And so I transfer it. And then when I needed money, I would like put it into Spectra coin and then like sell it for dollars, put it on my card. And then it's, it's the same as having a Visa debit card. So then Visa decided to like shut down all these like Visa cards unless you had a European address. And then I'm like, ah, fuck, 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 fuck. What am I doing now? <laughs> and um, so then I like I had just shut down my UK account, but I had one, I had a letter and I had, I think, one statement which had my friend's address in London. And I just like uploaded it and crossed my fingers and thought, please accept this and yeah, they did. So officially I'm living in London for that card. So yeah, it's just like ongoing issues. People just keep trying to shut me down. I keep trying to use crypto and people keep trying to shut me down. But I haven't had any issues in the last probably two months. So it's gone pretty good at the moment. Woohoo! <laughs> Now, for those of you listening who are feeling super overwhelmed and have no idea what the heck she's talking about, Feel that would be me and I. It's okay. It's all right because <laughs> it sounds like a <laughs> madhouse. And trust me, I have no idea. She lost me after she said she flew back to Australia for two days to open a bank account. What kind of world do we live in when we can't do that online? It's madness. It's crazy. Well, I did end up staying here for three weeks because it was <laughs> Easter at the same time. And I thought, oh, nah, good. might as well make a holiday out of it. <laughs> That is hilarious. I'm sitting here thinking like, oh my gosh, my family's from Brazil and we travel to and from back in uh, Brazil all the time. And 
I remember the few times that we did go, sometimes we would tell the bank and have no issues. Sometimes we wouldn't tell the bank and have no issues. Sometimes we would do both and have issues. Gabby, we're win. losing you here. Uh-oh, can you hear me now? At least. Yes. Okay, thanks. Uh, I can hear you fine. Okay. Sometimes I would travel to Brazil and there would be no issues. Sometimes we'd go and there'd be a ton of issues. But I remember whenever we sweat the card and they say, oh, your card isn't going through or it's declining. And we'd have to call the bank. And it was like an hour process of being transferred from here to there. Why are you in Brazil? How long are you being in Brazil? Do you commonly go there? Has your credit card been stolen? Blah, 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 blah. So it's such a hassle. So I can't even fathom when that goes from crypto into regular banking accounts. But we will get Well, the upside there. is if you have like a, a, a crypto Visa debit card, you don't have those specific issues because you can just like, they don't care. You can just, if you, if you spend money and the pin number's right or whatever, like it's all good. So you don't have the banks going, hmm, we don't like you being in Brazil. We'll just put a freeze on your card until you call us and tell us. So you, like these are separate issues that you have from the mainstream banking, just like being annoying and bossing you around. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I guess being a world traveler has its downsides. Little did we know. But that's all right. We made it through. <laughs> yes, it's it's terrible. <laughs> oh man, that is awesome. But anyways, you survived and you live it through. So you guys, if, if you are ever traveling and you're having issues with the bank and you're trying to get it from crypto to whatever currency or Just bank that you want. Me. I'm yeah. probably experienced. <laughs> she will probably even have a direct contact for you at that sh uh, at that bank. So just stand by. Now, Lena, did you have any issues with your bank accepting the currency that you were changing? No, none at all. I have Chase, but I mean, then again, I'm in the States, so yeah. I don't know. You weren't trying to do anything internationally. Well, we all, we live and we learn, and now she's just, I like to call it true girl many things, but bank experts definitely up there in the title list for all that. <laughs> I agree. I think, I think getting around banking bullshit expert is is better i wouldn't say i'm a bank expert but i have found like workarounds exactly and that my friend makes you an expert for all of us who have not had these issues and hopefully will not knock on wood that's for sure <laughs> oh man but yeah it should be fun so you guys fear not there are ways around all this crazy wallets and transferring from crypto to regular currencies and one day we will walk you through that but I just wanted to bring on these two ladies and share their experience because I know True Girl is an avid trader on there and has some experience with it. I didn't realize you've never traded um, crypto into a currency that you can use daily. Um, well, no, I just put it on the Spectre coin card and then that's it. But I will say, like, and this is one of the problems with mainstream adoption is, like, you have to really, really want it. Like, I've really, really wanted to, like, use crypto and spend crypto and the amount of roadblocks that have been chucked up in front of me like most people would just go oh, i'm giving up i'll yeah. just go back to using dollars or whatever so at the moment you have to really 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 want to use it and you have to learn how to use it and you have to learn how to like play all these banks at their own stupid game <laughs> and like i just this isn't good for mainstream adoption not at all not at all i can't even imagine and if I, I mean, Lena, you had a hard enough time just trading it with the help of some of, you know, Shane walking you through it. I can't imagine people trying to do this on their own. Uh, Chugar, you mentioned that you purchased uh, Bitcoin for a family member. Now, did you buy it for them and then transfer it to them or did you walk them through how to do it? Um, no, my sister is not very good at computers. Like she freaked out one day when I told her, look, her, her wi-fi printer stopped working and i said i'm in panama i can't help you just <laughs> plug the cable in and she was like oh my god i don't want to plug the cable in what if i fuck it up and i'm like it'll be fine it's a cable so no she did not buy her own bitcoin i bought it for her <laughs> and i heard a lot of people say that during the holiday season when you know the bitcoin started to pick up all that phase and sbd was really high everyone wanted to get into it even my brother who a couple of months ago when I told them I started blogging on Steemit, I was like, yeah, it's cryptocurrency. So basically they pay me in this online currency for it and I can cash it out if I want to or I can just use it to trade with other things. Um, and it kind of just blew his mind and <laughs> that was that. Well, he comes back for Christmas and he's like, I've done my research about the Bitcoin. I was like, you mean you watched a couple of YouTube videos? He goes, yes, same difference. 
And he goes to the process of telling me what investing in mining and the difference and his thoughts about it and how it was. And, he's, and his wife goes, I think it's going to die out. And I was like, well, there's a lot of people behind different computers who beg to differ and many investors who, um, who have a lot of stake in it. So I don't think it'll just randomly disappear. But um, I don't know. It may live up to its hype. It may not. I guess we'll see how it goes. But if you can get it for free, why wouldn't you want to join? And that's kind of the pitch I'm going with to get people to get on the uh, on Steam it. I was like, if you're curious about Bitcoin and not, why not join? Earn some SBD, some Steam from yourself. Trade it with other things. If you make a profit, cash out. If not, you haven't really lost anything because you haven't put anything in there. But In fact, I just was talking to my mom about that because I bragged that I just got $200 out of the bank because I traded SBD into Litecoin and I, I got it. And she says, what? She said, how much did you have to put in for that to get out 200? I said, nothing. It's from Steemit. It's all from Steemit. Isn't that crazy? Said, hmm. I could see the little cogs, the wheels turning in her head. She's thinking she might have to try this out. Exactly. Now, I'm only nervous about a few things with this. And ladies, let me know what your thoughts are. So a couple of months ago, there were a couple of people posting about taxation and the tax on crypto and all that nonsense and what their thoughts and theories were behind it. Of course, there's nothing out there right now to tax us on it, at least not that I know of. But there are some thoughts about claiming this um, as personal or private um, gain for it. And so they said that the big thing is if you just keep it within Steemit or within other coins, it doesn't really make sense to uh, claim it as capital gain. However, if you have cashed it out into the currency in which form you use, then it is technically considered as capital gain from it or personal financing or whatever phrasing you would like to use in the financial word. And therefore you may be or may have to claim it. Now, what are your thoughts? Now, Chugaru, I know you live around the world, so the rules may be different for you. But Lena, since you just cashed out, did you have any thoughts about this before you did? Is that something that's on your radar? What do you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. Well, it's the same as trading in the stock market. You essentially can trade untaxed, but as soon as you take out money, then, then they tax you for it. Um, I will try my darndest. And right now, because it's this is so confusing for me right now i'm just going obvious like i transferred through chase and coinbase which has my name and information i mean they have my bank account obviously mm -hmm. but if they start taxing i'm definitely going to start going underground with this because that's the whole point of cryptocurrency um if they start taxing it and i get that once it becomes more mainstream they will tax it because it makes sense for them you know, they can they can promote, say, hey, yeah, this is a great new way da, 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 and they'll make money off of it. The more people that use it, the more money they'll get. So it'll definitely I can see at least they will try to tax it in the future. But I don't think that's very cool. That's that defeats the whole purpose of cryptocurrency for me. I agree. And then it begs the question too: like, should you get a bit pay? debit card to where you can just pay for things with the debit card and the exchange kind of happens through there. So you're not technically cashing anything out. I've also heard and read that if you cash out less than 10,000, I believe the number was, then you're exempt from any sort of taxation or anything like that. That's in Australia. So I can ah, add to this conversation. There it is. So first of all, like a couple of months ago, Lexiconical wrote an awesome, what was it? Three or four part article on tax in the US. So you should go read that, mm -hmm. get a cup of tea before you do it because it's long and it's complicated. Um, in Australia, there's currently a loophole, which I'm sure they're onto and they'll close down soon. But if you make 10,000 like Aussie dollars worth of gains and you, if you don't convert back to fiat, so that we have a, um, like an awesome website called the living room of Satoshi and all the bills. Okay. So this is where Australian banking like is way, way better than us banking because all our bills here can be paid with this thing called BPay, which all the banks have had for years and years and years. It's free. It's very fast. And this living room of Satoshi you can go to, and there's, you can put in any BPay number and pay a bill in crypto. So that's one way of not going back to fiat to pay your bills first. Uh, or you can go to some of those like websites. I think there's a couple of travel ones that accept Bitcoin or whatever. So as long as you're paying in crypto and you've got up to like $10,000 worth of gains in one financial year and that's all tax free. But I'm sure they're going to close that because it just sounds like 
too good not to for the ATO. Um, normally, it's but it is taxed here. Um, it comes under capital gains. So basically, whatever your marginal tax rate is that you pay in Australia, that's what they will tax your capital gains at. So it's not tax free, but there is currently a loophole. I expect it will get shut down soon. But then I heard something interesting the other day, and I, I don't know, let's call it a grey area. So um, Jeff Berwick was talking about the whole um, whatever the tax thingy in the US coming after all the Coinbase people. And he made the suggestion that if you've got stuff in Coinbase, move it to another wallet and then tell the tax office that it was stolen and that they should fuck off because <laughs> you don't have access to that money anymore. It was taken out of your Coinbase wallet, so it was stolen by hackers. I mean, how are they going to prove that? If you'd like transfer it around other wallets, like I don't see how that they can prove that you own those wallets or if you or, and then especially if you move it to something like Monero or whatever, like then they've got no chance. So yeah, but that's an idea. If you've got a lot of crypto in Coinbase and the tax office is coming after you, <laughs> move it somewhere else, tell them it was stolen and yeah, see what happens. Write a, write a post, I'd be interested to know. <laughs> there you go. Um, so they can't track you're like, are you transferring or are you withdrawing and sending it somewhere without it you know, being traceable? Well, they, they would only have the, the wallet address, but they wouldn't have the information. Like they wouldn't know who that is connected to unless you tell them. Like that's, I think that's the point. Like they can't, they can't find out everything about every wallet. This is true. And Lexicon just made a comment in the chat and he also put his link. The in IRS, there. that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. He put a link in there to the post that you're referring to. And he said, that's exactly what you can do. But in the U.S., the IRS basically lets you presume you are guilty until proven innocent. So it's a little bit different. They would likely simply yeah, require well. you to show the transfer where it was stolen with a TX hash. Failing to produce that, welcome to federal pound me in the ass prison, as they say in the office. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it there did sound like a very easy way to get out of paying tax, there but it still, it, it was like, hmm, that's worth thinking about. This is true. This is very true. Well, until it all, I mean, it's all new. And the best thing about investing in things that are new is there's more loopholes than there, all, than there are laws and there are more oh. <laughs> ways around things um, than there are things straightforward. And until they figure it out, until they create precedents and until they create a law, it's all fair game and it's all true. So... We'll figure it out as we go. That's for sure. Okay. My, 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 tax, my tax avoidance strategy is moving to Panama because <laughs> I don't pay any tax there. So if you just want to, like, get rid of all your stupid tax, just, just move to a territory. Well, if you're U.S., you still have to report. But, like, if you're from any other country that doesn't have, like, the U.S. tax system, you can just move overseas. And as long as you're resident somewhere else, like, then they can't come after you. So yeah, if you want to get out of paying tax, just move to Panama. It's awesome. There you go. And the weather's great too. <laughs> the weather. Oh, so I have a question. So Coinbase, the the government knows about Coinbase. They're shutting things down, blah, blah, blah. What's another site to use other than Coinbase to convert crypto into fiat? I use Uphold. Like you can do it through that and... I have that linked to my, because I have a Hawaiian bank account, which I opened like one time when I was on holiday there. So that's why I have uh, an account there, which is not one of the crypto friendly US states. So I can't actually link that to Coinbase. So I can link it to Uphold and I can do like transfers between it and my Hawaiian bank account. So that is one way to go between the two. There you go. Um, and if you're in Europe, it's also really good because that's the where I transferred, like I had pounds and then I transferred it into like their pounds account and then I could buy crypto. So I do like, Uphold is pretty good for moving money between the two, but then you are, I mean, you still have to pay the wire fees, which is annoying, but that's, that is one way you can do it. Um, I don't know about other US accounts because that's I've only had to deal with this Hawaiian one and their lack of integration with Coinbase. Okay, good to know. Thank you. <laughs> oh, geez. 
Chugro, what would we do without you in our lives? We would just be lost puppies, just wondering all this nonsense. I'd be very interested. Oh, I've, in I've found out, like, the only reason I know all this is because, like I've told you, I keep getting shut down and I'm like, okay, well, I can't do that. What else can I try and do? And I just keep trying things until I get something that works. Well, you may have to give Lexiconical your WhatsApp phone number because apparently you're going to be his go-to um, to go help him bail him out of jail, which, you know, you could probably do with some some crypto and he could pay you back in crypto too. So it'd be a beautiful exchange. Awesome. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure the U.S. government would love to receive some Bitcoin for Lexi's <laughs> bail. They would. It would help with their pension that no longer exists. But that's a conversation for another day. Lena, have you had any success convincing any of your family members to join um, to join Steemit or to start investing in various cryptos? No. Short answer, no. They're <laughs> interested, but they haven't actually done it yet. Mm. Yeah, they're, we're yeah. starting to talk about it. They don't seem too interested because oh. whenever you say blogging, they're always like, well, I don't like to write. I was like, yeah, me neither. But, you know, we do what we can. Actually, I did convince my sister's boyfriend to buy some Litecoin back a few months ago. And so via my sister, he has told me that he's made some money from the Litecoin jump. So that was awesome. Nice. That's nice. Yep. Yeah, I was pretty proud of that one because nothing ever works for me. So that it worked for him. I was like, yes, I gave good advice for once in my life. <laughs> well, there you go. Now, I'm curious, ladies. Now, when you trade from SBD to Steam, do you always use the internal market um, located in your wallet or do you do it um, outside in other sources? Um, I either go through the internal market or I have used block trades. But interestingly, Bullith wrote an article the other day and if someone wants to go dig around on his blog, you'll find it. And he was saying that we should all go through uh, like beer checks or something to like create external demand because people outside of the steam at world, like they don't know there's an internal market and that there's demand for steam. And so we're all doing ourselves a disfavor by trading it on the internal market because it's not showing up externally. So I thought that was quite an interesting take, even though it's like way more complicated because you have to convert, like send it to Bittrex and then I don't know, like if you then, I don't know if you can go straight from SBD to Steam on Bittrex or you have to go via Bitcoin because if you have to go via Bitcoin, it's like, no, that's way too hard. So I, I, I haven't actually looked into it, but I think that I was like, yeah, that seems like a reasonable idea to show that there is actually demand on an external exchange. That's a good point. How about I, you, Lennon? I've always used internal because it just confuses me otherwise. <laughs> internal is very easy. And I think that's why we all use it. And it doesn't have any fees attached to it either. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm curious to know, do you ladies know now, Chugar, I'm assuming you do because you do a couple more trading um, than I have or Lena, but do you know what the difference between the buy price and the sell price is? Well, one, well, yeah, there's always a spread between the two. So the buy, like you'll buy at the higher price and you'll sell at the lower price, basically, if there's two prices there, that's, that's the market rate, whatever the buy price is and the sell price is, it's the difference between the two. So whichever way you want to go, you'll, you'll probably get the worst one unless you put an order in at a specific price. Which we'll go into a little bit later as well and show you guys exactly what we're talking about. The nice thing about the internal market, it auto populates for you what the buy and the sell price is. So it's not something you necessarily need to know. It is listed there for you. But for example, on BitShares for me, when I go to the internal market to do any kind of trading, it does tell me what the buy and the sell price and if I go to sell the particular coin that I'm going into, it doesn't auto populate. So I have to bid at the highest one. And the only reason why I know this is because I bid at the wrong level. And as she said, you can make a bid higher or lower than what's there, but then it doesn't always change auto. The exchange doesn't always happen automatically. Sometimes you have to wait um, for someone to buy at that certain price. Yeah, you, you generally, if you don't go for like the market rate, then, and you put in a price that you're prepared to buy or sell at, then there's usually a bit of waiting involved. But that's the same with the stock market as well. Like it's, it's pretty common. Oh, well, it goes to show how often I'm trading on the stock market as well. Never had to do that. <laughs> 
for a living. And I don't like to do that because waiting makes me nervous. It It, makes me think that I've done something wrong. Exactly. That's how I feel too. Now, do you ladies remember the first time that you um, did the power up in the internal market and what that experience was like? No, is the short answer. <laughs> it was so long ago, I don't blame you. How about it you? was a long time ago. I joined in May. That's like, I don't know, like 100 years ago in, <laughs> in Steam at years. <laughs> sure. <laughs> right? I don't know if I remember the first time, but every time I power up, I just like to see the numbers go up. I get I get super psyched. So it's like it's like a brand new feeling every time. It's like Christmas every time I power up. <laughs> I don't remember the first time I did it either, and I probably – had to look at some tutorial in order to make it happen because I just remember it being so confusing and looking at it and I was wondering I was like what the heck is even going on what is this internal market what if I put it in the wrong one I probably did put it in the wrong one and then it didn't work and I was just a lost puppy and have you ladies ever put um, SBD into the savings account in your wallet no I'm not really sure what the point of that is yeah ditto me neither Yeah, I'm going to make sure Shane comes in and addresses that because it's something to do that that the witness can control for it. And I'm curious to know that when SBD did do that big jump, had anyone put any funds in the savings if it would have made a difference? Um, Because that that percentage of savings that is in there that gains interest is based on the price of SBD and based on what the current value is. And you would think since they always increase the interest to make sure it's always at 0.1%, that once it did increase and was over one by, I think the highest I saw was $16, I think, for one SBD. Is that the highest I saw? Something crazy like that. Um, if that had made a difference. So stay tuned later and we'll, we'll get to ask that and see how that is. Now, while the SBD was skyrocketing, um, what was the max that you ladies traded it for? Yeah, I kind of went on the downslope, but mine was $11, I think, 11 something. Okay. I'm not sure. I think I just put it into Steam and I can't remember what it was, but I was pretty happy. Now, when you were trading it for Steam, what's the highest um, you got it for? So for, I think. When yeah, I I'm not looking- sure. But I, I, I just, it, yeah, it was, it was more than like all the previous ones that I've done kind of leading up until when it went a bit crazy. And I was like, yeah, that seems like a, a good amount of Steam, but I don't remember what it was. I can't remember. It was more because I looked at it again the other day and I think like, one Steam dollar was at about two point something and it had come down from three the day before. And I don't know, I want to say it was like up around, I don't know, like seven, eight, something like that. But yeah. I, I'm not sure. I, I can't remember. remember. And yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I remember too. I remember when I was looking at it and I think it was um, for one SBD. I don't think I did one SBD, but I remember it was... For 10 SPD, I think I looked at it, I could have 150 steam, I think was the highest. And maybe it wasn't that high, but I just remember seeing 150 and it was less um, SPD than I had ever seen it for for the exchange. And I was like, oh my gosh, you could almost make yourself into a mini dolphin if you had enough SPD stored up that you could power up into. It was crazy. Yeah, well, that, well, that's kind of how I was looking at it as well. And so I was powering up everything. And because I'm writing the Travel Digest, and so I was like, oh, is it my day to claim my, I don't know, however much uh, SBD? I think, oh, we're making around $30 a post at the moment, but I think it was more around like the $15. And I'm like, so then half of it was going to Steam anyway, which the Steam at World Map account keeps. And so I was like, where's my $6? I want to power it up. I need my $6. Was probably the highest you've ever been paid for for you to do the the posting for them. Yeah, which during yeah. that time, well, it's it, it was it was good. Oh, it was it was, and then my my Tevis was like, oh, I've just taken mine out. Like as soon as it went in, it was like boom, back down to zero because both of us were taking out our money and just powering it up. <laughs> well, there you go. That's all you really need. Yeah, I keep I keep wondering. I was like, I didn't have any SBD at that time. Somehow it all just magically disappeared from my wallet, and I was so upset. I was like, man, had I just had 20 SBD, I could have so much more steam right now. And I was I was like, all right, I'm gonna be ready for the next one. I'm always gonna keep a handful of SBD handy just in case this boom happens again. That I'm gonna be able to catch it and power up and be a rock star because I definitely missed it last time. 
And Lexicano just made a comment. Yeah. He said he thinks he saw the highest was for 0.17 SBD per steam in the internal internal market, which is insane. Yeah, I think I saw it as that too. Are we going to get another one though? That's the question. Or is it a one-time offer and now it's back to normal? You know, I, I like to think about it. I don't know if you ladies remember when Bitcoin was about to be split into two and it was going to be Bitcoin and Bitcash, I believe it was. And there was all this talk about, you know, is it going to go up and is it going to go down? And it had that big jump and then it finally split and it kind of settled and it jumped up recently. Now, I think every year around this time before the new year, we're going to see a big jump like it. But oh, did you speaking of Bitcoin, did you have Bitcoin yesterday? Because apparently there was another fork. It was like Bitcoin God or, or Bitcoin Santa or something. Really? I don't know, but it was happening on the 25th. Yeah. Dang it. No, I always seem to miss these things. <laughs> I have bit I have Bitcoin, but I have so little Bitcoin that I can't actually trade it. <laughs> oh, is your Bitcoin worth less than the fees? <laughs> yes, because yep. that's, that's really shit. <laughs> that's how much Bitcoin I have. Yep. That is hilarious. Well, that's more Bitcoin than I own. I don't know any, <laughs> so you you got yourself going there. At least you have some. Which wallet do you have that in? That one, you know, on oh, that's in Bitrix. Okay. Yep. There you go. Yeah, that's not even in a wallet. I just keep that on the exchange because it's it's so little, it's non-existent. <laughs> what about you, Chu? Sorry, I pulled my um, headset out, so I didn't hear the first bit. What? That's okay. Um, she was talking about. I asked her what wallet she has her Bitcoin in, and she said Bitrix. And I asked you, where do you have yours? Oh, I keep mine all over the place, Cubby. Smart, smart. But I am. <laughs> Like for a sort of like a, a hot wallet, I like um, Exodus. That's probably my favorite one for the hot wallets because okay. I find it, yeah, I, I find it very easy to use. It's got Shapeshift built in. Um, yeah, it's just a nice wallet. Cool. Now, I, I only have one, but I should probably start looking to other. And there's are a couple of posts out there that talk about different types of wallets. But have you ladies heard of the dangers of using... What's it called? It starts with a P. Um, Polynex? Polynex? Poloniex? Poloniex. Although, according to Lexicon, Exodus isn't very safe either. But I've heard that trading on Poloniex actually has uh, a lot of issues, and I don't know if it's been resolved. So since you have it, Chu, have you heard any of this, and have you experienced any of your crypto getting stuck in the market? No. Um... No, I don't really use it. I've used, I think I've used it once or twice, um, but no, and I don't keep money on exchanges anyway, so it doesn't typically get stuck there. Maybe that's the secret of success. If you're going to trade it, trade it and then get it out because... <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, that's where most of the hacks happen anyway. It's on exchanges. So like the advice from most people is, you know, just put it on there, do your trading and then get it out again. Wow. So I guess every coin has a different one because in my mind, I don't know if you think the same, Lena, but if I'm trading in the wallet, it would make sense to me just to leave it in there until I'm ready to cash it out or move it elsewhere. I wouldn't think to trade it and then move it in order to safe keep it. But apparently even Lexicano said that he's had thousands of dollars in Bitcoin locked up by Coinbase for almost three years now, which is insane. Well, well I don't know if, if there's a wallet that is an exchange, I think the two are separate, right? Uh, generally. Well, they could be both. It depends on the wallet. Ah, okay. Yeah. See, I have I have a paper wallet, as it's called. Well, it's not made out of paper. I have one of those Ledger Nanos for my Litecoin, which is, you know, I, I really like it. But I've just downloaded Jax. Um, I've never used Jax before, and I haven't gotten it set up yet because I have some OMG, and that is Ethereum-based, and I haven't figured out how to put that on my Ledger Nano yet, so... I'm going to put it on Jax until then. Yeah, I I, no, I haven't used Jax. Um, but yeah, the the Ledger Nanos or whatever the other one is, like they are the safest ones because they're external to the internet, basically. So they can't really be hacked unless someone has your details and has access to that thing. So they are the safest way to hold your cryptos is in a Nano wallet or I forget what the other one is. Oh, is it? No, that's Tre a ledger. There's a Trezor. 
Trezor, Trezor. That's yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking of, yeah. And that you should buy them direct from the manufacturers, not off eBay because then like if you buy them off a eBay supply, you don't know if they've been tampered with. So there's a tip. Right. Hmm. Well, there you go. Wow. There's so much to learn, so much to do, and I cannot be more grateful to have both you ladies on here. So for the last 15 minutes that I have you on air with me, why don't you tell us a little bit of what you like to do and all the various things that you do on Steemit and on other discords. So Lena, I'll let you go first. The different things that I do on Steemit as far as trading? As far as what you like to write about. Oh, um, I don't write much these days. <laughs> um, let's see. I, I don't know. Lately, I've been writing about the radio show, so the Cabinet of Curiosities and things like that. I've been thinking about actually writing posts, in-depth posts about the things that I have on the radio show. Uh, this this past Sunday was Aliens, um, and actually next week is also going to be Aliens because you know Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> it's too big of a subject to just talk in two hours. So I've been thinking about doing that because I really don't write any posts anymore. I've kind of run out of things to say. I never thought this I day was, would come. Yeah, well, I was never, I've never been a blogger, you know. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Miss Elizabeth, for putting that out there. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> yeah, I've never been a blogger. And so in the beginning, I wrote about things that happened on, you know, my little farm life. And that was kind of fun. But then I kind of ran out of things to talk about. And then I'd write about my art, but I haven't arted in a long time either. So I kind of ran out of things to talk about there. Um, and I don't really write fiction enough. So I don't know. I liked your Faces of Yoga post. That you oh, did. yes. Thank that you. <laughs> yeah, I like to post about stupid things, you know, things that that kind of lighten the atmosphere a little bit, you know, bring a little levity into a lot of a lot of posts which can be very serious or very well it's good it's good in a sea of crypto posts in your feed to have like funny stuff like 30 faces of yoga i like it yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and i also like when i wanted to get away from you know the the obligatory chick in makeup making a kissy face at the camera you know showing some leg to get more uploads <laughs> and stuff you, you know? mean so, you mean you didn't want to do a tutorial on um how to put makeup on and make thirty thousand sp or steam or however it panned out right? to me who's like making thirty thousand steam by posting about makeup i want to know you didn't well, see not that makeup no oh, was it makeup I don't, I don't know if it was makeup, but they definitely posted about some tutorial thing and made buku dollars. <laughs> and I thought it was makeup, wow. but maybe it was something different. It was insane. It was in, it's an old artifact. It was a it's makeup, makeup tutorial. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it was. Wow, crazy. Was the, was I missed there, that one. Was there nudity involved or something? No, no I he read it. He's, he's <laughs> posting. He's writing about it now. <laughs> they basically got that's the whole crazy. Room. So yeah, so I like posting things. Of course, I wasn't wearing any makeup, and I make apparently I make really stupid faces. The my my first radio show, uh, I blew up the, the the servers, and it kept freezing on Steam Star. And uh, according to Sir Cork, every time the video would freeze, I would be making the stupidest faces. He said it it didn't happen that you just happened to be maybe smiling or looking away. He said you were pulling the weirdest faces when the video froze. And so people would look at the most ridiculous faces of yours for like two and a half minutes before it skipped again to another ridiculous face. So I'm good at stupid faces. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sensing a theme here, Lena. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll just make stupid faces. In fact, I've been thinking of doing a, like a, a hair, um, a, oh, like a, a hairstyle photo shoot. Recently I got in the mail something from Aveda and it had this this woman and she had her hair styled three different ways and one of it said beachy and one of it said classic and one of it said i don't know trendy or something like that and i wanted to do that with me be because i i have my i have a shaved head i don't have any i was hair, gonna say so don't you have short hair i have no hair so i wanted to do you know beachy and then the same literally the same picture trendy the same picture maybe looking another way classic <laughs> I like it. I would totally upvote that. <laughs> yeah, I Just think because it would be funny. It would be hilarious. You definitely have my support on that as well. So I did cool. put her link in there. Her show is every Sunday. Now, what time UTC? 
It is 9 p.m. UTC. And what time is that Eastern for the rest of us? Mm. Oh, Eastern, 4, 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. There you go, folks. Check it out. I love it. I hop out of my show and I run over there to listen because I don't think she makes stupid faces. I love her face, but it is quite entertaining to watch her expression as she tells us these awesome stories about um, just about anything. We talked about ghosts and you talk about fairies. Fairies. I miss that one, but that one sounded hilarious for sure. And actually, if anyone has any stories of odd or unusual things that have happened to them, DM me on Discord. I want to hear all about this stuff, like Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, Chupacabra, anything. Strange <laughs> Wendigo sighting in the woods. Just, you know, hit me. I love I love to hear all this stuff. And I'll, if, if you wouldn't mind, I could read it on the air and you could be famous. Boom. That is a secret of success. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lena. I appreciate you being here. Her link is in there. Go check her out. Now, Chew Girl. Let's go on with your long list of activities because Homegirl is, oh, and I forgot to mention before we jump to Chew Girl, Lena it does a lot of editing. So if you type any post in a Google Doc and you want to leave it in the spelling or grammar channel, she will edit it for you. She's phenomenal at it, probably the best. I can't believe she puts up with all the things I put in there and edits for it. She is <laughs> awesome. Do it. Use just it. proofreading. Just proofreading. <laughs> yes, it's awesome. All right, sorry about that. Go ahead, Shoe Girl. Now tell us, what do you like to write about on Steemit? And what are all the various activities that you're currently involved in? I feel like I repeat myself every time I talk about what I'm doing on Steemit. You basically... make it sound like it's a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, I don't, like 90% of my posts now are either Team Australia updates or uh, Travel Digest stuff. Like, that's it. I don't write about anything else. And um, because I don't have time for start. And then like Lena, it's like, well, I don't really have anything interesting to write about. I mean, occasionally I do, but they're few and far between. So yeah, so I write Team Australia updates and I now have like, I'm not even looking for people at the moment. I have a backlog of people I have to introduce. I think I've got like 12 people at the moment going, oh boy. where's my introduction? Where's my introduction? <laughs> I want I want my dull money. I want my Centrelink payments. Anyway, and so I've got that. And then usually I try to make them a bit more interesting as well by talking about like either stuff going on in Team Australia. So uh, like this Saturday, we've got the meetup happening here in Brisbane, which hopefully people are going to come to and I'm not going to be sitting there on my own like some kind of idiot. Um, and what else? And then there was like some Christmas stuff that Matt Clark was doing. So if there's something going on in Team Australia, generally I'll find out about it and I'll give it a, a bit of a, um, a promotion. Or if there's something going on with MSP, because I've promoted your stuff a couple of times, Cubby. So yeah, because you're awesome. Like, if, there's, if, if, some, if people have got something interesting going on, particularly if it's related, like I like to keep it Team Australia or MSP because, you know, they're the two things that I'm most involved in then I'm happy to give um, shout outs and promotions in that. Um, and then the Travel Digest one, I typically write two days a week, but this week I've done three because Martibus was in Malta and he dropped his GoPro down the cliff <laughs> and had to go get it and didn't have time to write yeah. Travel Digest. And I was like, okay, well, you go find your GoPro, which he didn't, it's in the ocean somewhere. Oh. Um, so that's the other one. And now I spend a lot of time like um, doing the curry work because I'm always like going, oh, maybe I'll just spend 10 minutes looking for something. And then, you know, suddenly two hours has gone past and <laughs> you've either found something awesome or at the moment I haven't really found anything in the past two days. Oh, gosh. Um, well, yeah, I mean, because there's not been a lot of stuff. It and is then holiday. I just keep. Or, or like this morning, I find like scammers and then I go, hmm, I'll report this to steam cleaners. So I spent like a good half an hour this morning, like reporting this person's posts that they plagiarized over the last six days, just going steam cleaners, steam cleaners, steam cleaners. <laughs> so yeah, like nice. it, I get a warm and fuzzy feeling either way, whether I get someone a hundred dollar upvote or I get them knocked down to a rep of eight, like either way, I feel <laughs> good about it. So, you're doing like, the community what, so good. You, you, am, recruit, you curate am. for them, you find new members and you get them connected with other Aussies and then you find the scammers of the Steemit world. <laughs> I do. Well, they piss me off and like they're taking up room in my like 
SQL queries. I'm like, why are you here? You're just, you're just annoying me. So I'm like happy to report them. So they're the, they're the main things that I'm doing really. And, and not much else. Like being on the radio seems to be a bit of a thing at the moment. Yeah, this is true. Never a bad thing. Well, guys, I put their links in there. Ladies, thank you so much for helping me through this first hour. You ladies are awesome. And I had time to write a new post and post it out there for the next show, which will happen in an hour, guys. So stay tuned for the first time in the next, not this coming hour, but the following one. Uh, Scaredy Cat Guide and Unius are both in uh, Long Island, I believe, and they'll be doing their own show where they'll be drinking and playing music and having a grand old time. So it'll be a meetup and a show up. And it's going to be awesome. So check MSP Waves. I just posted about it. Um, you can come see it there. And um, ladies, thank you so much for talking to us about your experience. And I'm going to go ahead and kick y'all ladies out. So say goodbye. Bye, ladies. Bye. <laughs> That is awesome. So you were just listening to Chugro and Lena um, sharing about their experience. I know it's a bit overwhelming. There is just so much going on with the wallets, with um, uh, crypto and trading and all of that. But as I promised in our wallets until Shane decides to show up, we are going to do some learning. Now, this is a lot of basics and most of you kids have been here for a little while and you already know this information and I'm still learning it as we go. Um, so as I mentioned, we are going to be talking about wallet basics. And as you heard from these two pros, there's a lot more that goes into it, but understanding the fundamentals will kind of help you get a better gauge. And then really when the time comes where you want to take it a step further and do a little bit more, do not hesitate. Ask one of us. We will direct you in the right way and um, walk you through the steps for it. But I wanted to share this link with you guys because before the show, I was looking at where I could find information on wallets. And oh my gosh, Lord and behold, look who's here. Hello, <laughs> friends. <laughs> for some reason, it's not the same when you do it because I think it sounds better when I do it. I don't know why, it's just weird. <laughs> Well, what's going on? I've missed an hour here, haven't I? You have. I had Chew Girl on. I had Lena on. We were talking about wallets. We were talking about trading. We were talking about banks. We were talking about all sorts of things. Um, but then I told, and then I felt like we weren't really getting down to what the heck basics of wallets was. We were jumping too far ahead. So I kicked my two best friends off, and I shared a link from the Frequently Asked Questions on Steam and Inc. And I was about to do some reading about what the wallet is and some different things like that. So you came just in the right time. It's like you knew. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, today just got the, <laughs> we had a great show, Shane. I doubt you can top it, says Chu. <laughs> you, you know, she's pro she's probably not wrong. You know, I probably, probably I probably should cut the first half one and make it its own series and then like have the second one be what we were actually gonna talk about. Cause it, it was pretty phenomenal. I'm convinced that the three of us could have our own show and it would be flawless because an hour passed by and I didn't even notice. And I was like, whoa, I better get down to business. Wow. So, so okay, give me the TLDR because I haven't been able to hear anything. I've been out in the middle of nowhere, Texas. Wow, check yeah. you out. Well, if you wanted to take a couple of minutes and gather your thoughts, get a drink or two, get comfy, I was just going to start hitting them with what the Frequently Asked Question says about what the wallet is and really dive into what we were planning on talking about. And you can come back and kind of walk us through it. But with the girls, we were talking about since Shoe Girl has actually done some trading. So her experience with that, we talked about the various wallets and trading platforms she utilizes. Lena actually traded for the very first time SBD into cash. And so she talked us through that whole experience and what that was like. And she says, you actually were the one to walk her through it and how overwhelming it was and how there were so many steps and how frustrating it is that there isn't an easy way to do that. And we kind of chatted a little bit about that. And um, it kind of went, you know, everywhere from there. And then we brought it back. Then we went crazy again. And then we brought it back and so on and so forth. Yeah, that first time using block trades, if you're sending it out somewhere, it's kind of scary. Because mm -hmm. you're not really sure what's going on. And then it kind of magically appears. So, yeah, let me, let me get settled here. Okay. You go ahead and get started. And I'll hop in when I can. Cool. All righty. So that link that I shared with you guys, I am, if you go onto the Twitch feed on MSP Waves, you will notice that I am actually screen sharing with you because I want you guys to take a look at what I'm looking at. So I'm just trying to position it here on the MSP Waves, not MSP Waves, the Steam It Inc. website. And let me actually move some things around so that way I can take a look at what you guys are taking a look at as well. 
But I just wanted to show you that on the Steam and Ink website, you can actually go there and get a lot of your basic questions answered. Now, when I first joined, I had no idea this thing was even there. But it is, and it's a beautiful thing. And it actually has a section there on wallets. And what is all included in a wallet? What the heck is a wallet? Why do I have a wallet in there? Um, and so I was just kind of reading it through and it talks about the two different types of currencies that you currently have in your wallet, which all of you know and love because you use it all the time. <laughs> and every time you go into your wallet and you click that button to redeem those two currencies in SBD and Steam, this is what it's talking about on your wallet. So you will see there information shown in your wallet. How do I transfer my Steam or Steam dollars into my savings? It kind of talks a little bit about that. How do I spend money to another user? Which you could also do as well. And will I receive notifications when the activity is set? So all that sort of things. But if you go on steamit.com on the upper right hand corner, you will notice where it says my wallet. And if you click on there, boom, your wallet magically appears. And at the very top, you will see where it says you current rewards, how much you have in SBD and how much you have in SP. Beautiful thing with that every time you post payouts. And you, if you have the Chrome extension that I have on this computer, you can actually um, do some pretty cool things extra that you can't normally do. So if you don't have it, I recommend it. But under rewards, you can check Arthur rewards and creation rewards, which are the two different types of rewards you can get. And once you click redeem, it will be updated into your wallet as Steam and, S and Steam dollars for it. Now, again, if you click on your little icon on the upper right hand corner, um, there's a quick access for you to move in and about there. And then if you hit the three little lines, that is where you can go to the second one, the link, which is the FAQ, the frequently asked questions. And what I do is I just did a quick search on wallet and it says what information is shown in my wallet. And this just kind of breaks it down. It doesn't really tell you what a wallet is, but it tells you what a wallet holds. And it holds your Steam and Steam dollars and anything that is delegated to you. Now, you may be wondering, well, how will I know if someone delegated to me or not? Excellent questions, my friends. Well, if you go back to where we were before in your wallet, in your Steam, it has how much you personally have built up by either transferring from SPD into Steam, um, into Steam and then Steam Power. And just under that, you'll see either a plus or a minus, and that shows how much people have delegated to you or how much you have delegated out. Ideally, if you see a negative sign, that means that you how much you have delegated. And if you see a plus, that's how much people have delegated to you. Now, if more people have delegated to you um, than you have sent out, it will send a plus. It doesn't separate the two, um, but that shows all there. And then we have the savings account that we mentioned before that we're going to ask Shane about, about how it has zero APR right now, but witnesses actually have control over whether that changes or not, where it's there. And then um, just below that is some interesting information where it has the estimated account value of how much your account is currently worth. Now, I was always curious to know how did they come up with that number? Because if you look at my wallet right now, Steam Power, I have... Um, a thousand steam. I have about seven. Uh, I'm sorry. I have a thousand steam power. I have seven steam and I have about 59 SBDs to my name. So how in the world did they come up with this 3,352 value for it? That is something we will also cover once Shane designs to join us back in. But if any of the audience know, um, what that is or have any questions so far or if you would like to answer any of these questions as i ask them for the audience listening feel free to type that or feel free to let me know and i will bring you on here so you can chit chat but that's kind of like the basics of where to find your wallet in steamit.com now there you can find other things as well and the longer you've been here this is all mundane stuff that you do all the time like you click your blog you click your your wallet and your settings you look at this all the time and you don't really think about it but oftentimes, how, much, how often do you forget from the beginning how confusing it all was and what it all meant? But it's extremely important that you understand how it works so that way you can further invest in it. So as I was talking about before, in your wallet, it holds something called SPD, Steam, and Steam Power. Now, what in the world is the difference 
between the three. And it's funny because you would think as long as I've been on cement that I would know this like the back of my hand and it'd be no problem. But I always forget when I am transferring from one to the other that steam power is very different than steam. And we will even ask Shane if you can even tr um, trade in the open market steam or steam power. I think you'll be interested to know that you can actually do it with one but not the other. Do you know which one that is? I've I think you might be interested to know. You you were saying steam or steam power? Mm-hmm. Or SBD. Or, or SBD. Yes, you can openly trade steam or SBD. You cannot openly trade steam power. Boom. There it is, folks. Don't forget it. So in the internal market, you can trade SBD into steam and steam into SBD, but you cannot trade steam power in the open market but you can power down from steam power. Now, I've never powered down before. So Shane, when you power down steam power, does it automatically convert into steam or does it convert into SBD? Um, in the internal market, I believe, I'm sorry, on the internal wallet, I believe it powers down into, uh, um, into steam. Um, and you can, yes, you can power up another user as Clay says here. Mm -hmm. um, so you can give another user steam power from liquid steam. Um, Very good. And in the frequently asked question place, it does tell you the difference between steam, steam power, and steam dollars. And as he mentioned, steam is the basic liquid currency token in the platform. Steam can be powered up into steam power, traded for steam dollars, and transferred to other accounts. It is a cryptocurrency token similar to Bitcoin. Now, steam power is abbreviated by SP, as you'll see all the time, and people refer to it as SP. It's a measurement of how much influence users has in the Steam network. The more Steam Power a user holds, the more they can influence the value of the post and comments. Steam Power is less liquid. If a user wishes to power down SP, they will receive equal distribution of the Steam weekly over a 13-week period. And that is to help balance the ecosystem of Steam so people aren't just making $30,000 on a post, powering it down, and escaping, and we are left with nothing. So there is a balance to that as well. Last but not least is our steam dollars, commonly abbreviated at SBD are liquid stable value currency tokens designed to be pegged at a dollar. Steam dollars can be traded with steam and transferred to other accounts for comments or exchange. Steam dollars may also be converted into steam in a process that takes three to 0.5 days. Steam dollars can be used to buy things in the marketplace, such as purehub.com or other platforms. So there's lots of things that you guys can do in the wallet, lots of different places to go. I don't know if you guys have heard to other radio station, but some people don't even realize that you can do this in the internal market. Some people use other like Bitrix and other trading platforms in order to do this. And I have heard that some can make more by doing it in other platforms and others cannot. So it just kind of depends. Am I right, Shane? You're right. It all depends on your timing, um, how much you're doing. If, if it's a small amount, you may be better off just using the internal market if it's if, if you're doing a large large amount and when i'm talking large i'm talking hundreds and hundreds at a time uh, that's when you may want to use an external market but for the most part if you're a minnow and you're looking to exchange back and forth and you're not doing a ton um, the internal market's going to be e your easiest and best bet to do mm -hmm. So a ton of information there, and I know most of you already know this, but if you guys ever have any questions or doubt or just don't know how to phrase it, they really break it down um, in the frequently asked questions. So that's always awesome. And in the post that I did today about this show, I did link a couple of uh, statement accounts or posts that explain how to do it in the internal market. So feel, feel free to click on those and learn as well. They also walk you through how to cash out on Coinbase. And there's also a YouTuber video in there on how to do it as well. So lots of different options for you. If you're a visual learner like I am, I kind of need someone to show me. Sometimes the, the screenshot pictures don't do it because they skip certain steps or you don't realize now you put your password. So yes, it's normal to put your password and get to it. Um, so to me, it has to be dummy down to the dumbest. So for me to make it work. So Kubi, mm -hmm. how have you been? <laughs> I have been good. I am allowed to work from home this week, so I thought I was going to be super productive and wake up, go to the gym, and either work from home or go to the office and get things done. Um, but today was more like a Sunday where I was trying to do more things that I could handle. Because <laughs> I have another show that I normally 
due on Monday, but since it was Christmas, they decided to change it for today. And so I had to prep for that. I was running late and then I had to leave a couple of minutes early in order to come here and do this one. And so I kind of felt like I was running around with my head cut off, but it was good. How was your day? My day was long. I thought I was going to be home in a, like two hours ago. <laughs> plenty of time to get things ready. Plenty of time to have whatever I was going to say tonight ready. And instead, I get some extra patience. So I, I got home late. Oh, bummer. So, yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Why does work always take us away from doing the things that we want to? My brother keeps asking. He's like, do you want to do this blogging thing full time? And I was like, mm. You know, this blogging thing is really fun because I don't depend on it to make a living. And I, I, I have a really awesome job, but I really enjoy spending all my time doing it. So it's, it's tough because when I'm at work, I'm thinking about doing it. And then during the day when I'm supposed to be working at home, I think about all the stuff I could be probably be more productive if I was in the office, but I'm not. So what to do? So let me ask you a question, Kubi. Okay. Do you know off the top of your head? Okay why SBD was meant to be pegged to $1? I don't. The idea was that SBD could be used as a currency for, um, for trade, for actual trade for goods and services. And they felt it would be more widely accepted if they would have a currency that was a standard unit of, like, like a standard unit of a measurement, for lack of a better term. That, uh, that merchants could count on this SBD wasn't going to fluctuate, that this was going to be worth $1, one US dollar. Of course, as we've seen over the past few weeks, that's not necessarily the case. So there's a lot of argument now whether SBD is really fulfilling the idea that was intended for it. So there's a lot of more arguments out there now whether it's even going to be around here in the next uh, next six months or so. I figure it probably will be, but that discussion has started. Interesting. And now when the ladies were on and we were having a grand old time because they know how to say cubby. And in case you haven't noticed, this is Minnow University radio session. And so if you look, I'm not actually cubby. I am Miss Elizabeth, the pink professor. So since you're in my classroom and I am in yours, we should address each other properly. So you can call me Miss Elizabeth. Thank you very much. <laughs> But we were talking about savings and the percentage of which an APR is there. And if that changed with the different prices of SBD going up and down, and with that, would it make a difference for us to put it in with the price of SBD going up? Would it actually make sense to transfer some of it into the savings account in our wallets? Miss Kuby? <laughs> Miss Elizabeth! Oh, I can't take you anywhere. Okay, Ms. Kuby, I'll answer your question. Um, right now, yeah, we have zero percentage on the savings wallet. And so there's really no point to have it in there right now. Um, that is in there as if, uh, if, if the price is well under $1, then the witnesses, the top 20 witnesses can have a, uh, have a rate that will then sort of push that SBD being close back to a dollar. Um, since we are wild, wildly over $1 right now, there's absolutely no sense of having an APR right now. That's what I figured. So if someone had it in there while it was under, and then it the price just shot up, would they have made a profit from it? I suppose they could. I haven't seen it work long enough to actually uh, um, to see how that would work. I don't... I, I get the feeling the witnesses there in the top 20 are so on top of their game that I'm sure if it if it was under and there was an APR and they shot up real quick, that they would have that APR dropped before you could blink an eye. Interesting. Meaning that I doubt there would be much of a profit being made on, yeah. the, uh, on no, the savings. I agree. I just think it's it's interesting that you would think that would be a loophole, but that's something that is so watched over that maybe it's not as big of a loophole as I thought it would be. Um, most of the loop, most of the loopholes are fairly well covered, either by witnesses or by the setup of Steam itself. For example, the I, I heard you talk about delegation earlier, mm -hmm. and the uh, the reason there's a seven day cooldown when you undelegate is to close that possible abuse 
a steam power loophole. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it, that, that prevents someone from delegating to an account, vote, 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 taking that delegation and put it into another account and vote, 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 vote. So that seven day cooldown prevents that from happening. Now I was talking to them before about the time frames of which you can power down. Some of it's 3.5 days. The other one, I believe it's 13 days. Now, what was the thought process behind that and how did they come up with this number? Uh, I'm sorry, three days for power down? Yeah, there is one of them. Let me take a quick look at my notes again to where it takes three days in order for it to go from one to the other. Maybe power down is not the correct wording, but the other one is Oh, you, you were talking about the internal market when it comes to either convert or use the internal market. Um, let's see. If you do a conversion from SBD to Steam or vice versa, there's, there's a three-day wait on it. And what you're basically doing then is burning Steam it's, or burning the SBD and making it go bye-bye. Oh. And because it is, and on that, it is a one-to-one -one ratio, which means you're not getting the best rate. Um, I don't really know any good reasons for any of us to use it. Okay. You know, if you're going to convert, always use that internal market. Yeah, no, I agree. And we have heard from quite a few people who have done that and have lost money. And I, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Oh. I, you, I was going to give you trouble, but I believe you powered, you did a full power up on a, on a post instead of 50 50 didn't okay you? so that was just what i was about to say so sometimes your pink professor here and all her brilliance um does things that she is uh still learning in the process because every professor had to learn at one point in time and so i at this time i was writing post for a different account and all the sbd went to them and any personal post that i wrote i always did a hundred percent power up so i always knew when it paid out that that would be something i could keep in its entirety well, it turns out when SBD is a, above a dollar and you power up, you actually lose a ton of money into it because it's converted. And I don't know, and I didn't really care. I was just really upset because I was losing money in it. And so maybe you can okay, explain. Okay, so hold on. Dflow has a question here. Okay. The difference between converting and buying Steam with SBD. Um, it, it's actually a really good question, and I do not really... <laughs> You, you powered up. Okay. Powering up is different than converting. Converting is, um, if you look under your wallet and let me see here and you click on, I don't know, let's just pick, oh, let me get to an account. I can actually, use. I wonder if I still have it, the notes from, and actually I believe they took conversion off because of, um, SBD was, you know, you know what that did just happen. Tim Cliff um, was in the witness channel, so they took the conversion off there. It looks like. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it looks like they. Uh, it looks like the conversion is done. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's not on there anymore. Look at that. I, I remember seeing Tim Cliff was talking about getting rid of it, and I guess they have. Um, it converts based on the price of Steam, and it's my understanding. It was a. Uh, and counts SBD as one USD. That's right. So, oh, it um, isn't on there. That's right. I don't see it on there. But it is on the frequently asked questions, so they should probably update that. Yeah. So we can we can cancel out, out that discussion. No, Dflow, you did not do the bad thing because it looks like the opportunity to do the bad thing is no longer there. Count yourself lucky because many have done the same mistake. Now you were going to explain why powering up. There you go. See, Dflow, you're doing better than than some. Why powering up at 100% versus doing 50-50 when SBD is above a dollar is no bueno. Yeah, so if 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 uh, converting is the bad thing, that's right, Lex Connell. So if you are writing a post, you will see options there. You can either deny payment altogether. You can either take a 50-50 payout or you can completely power up meaning it's all going to come to you in steam power. Uh, when SPD is over a dollar, you definitely want to do the 50-50. And that's because while SPD is pegged to a dollar, that is absolutely true on the platform itself. 
So if you have a post that's going to pay out, let's take, uh, let's just say you're going to get a $50 payout. 25 of that is going to come to you as SBD. And the other 25 is going to come to you in the value of steam or steam power. So steam power is trading. The last I looked was at, I don't know, $3 50 cents, somewhere in that range. You know, the, the $25 is going to be that 25 divided by the 350. So that I can't math right now. I just got home. What is that? 12 SPD, <laughs> <laughs> give or take, <laughs> uh, not, not, not 12. It's, uh, eight SPD, give, give or take a little bit there. So, um, yeah, half of it will come to you in SBD, half of it will come to you in steam power at the uh, external market value of the steam power. Now, if it's under a dollar, you want that uh, payout to come to you in all steam because you are getting a lot more uh, steam for your money at that point. If SBD is under $1, that is when you will do 100% power up on your posts. When SBD is over one dollar, fifty fifty, and you'll you'll come out ahead. Boom! Now you kids know. Don't learn from my mistakes. Don't do it. And it's funny because I was talking to someone else, and they were explaining. They're like, "Shoot, I didn't know that either. <laughs> I just did the last couple of my posts were all one hundred percent power up." And I said, "That's okay. Uh, now you know. So moving forward, you'll do better. And that's all that we can do." So. Well, well, that's the thing. Any, if anyone brand new is listening and you don't know, none of us knew when we first started. I mean, a few of us probably figured out early, um, but for the most part, these are issues that everyone has come across. There's some of the, you know, some of the idios idiosyncrasies of the platform that need to be explained because they're not readily apparent. And as much as there is the frequently asked questions, it's not necessarily clear even after reading those what everything means. So that, that's one of the reasons why we decided to put together Mino University and this show. I know a lot of people listening right now, this is old hat to you, but there are a lot of new people listening and we want to make sure that you guys are doing everything correct. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And trust me, a lot of times I, I think I know something and I can tell you I know something, but it isn't until I do it myself that I really learn. So even if you're listening today and you've done it a million times before or you've never done it before and you think you'll forget, it's okay. Practi learning comes with practice. So the more that you mess with your wallet, the more that you go back and forth from it, the more you will learn. Uh, but while I was doing some research about what wallets were and what all it involved, there was something that they mentioned called um, the blockchain and how the blockchain is kind of like an open ledger. Can you explain that to us, Shane? Uh, it, it, that's basically what it is. The block is basically a block of information of, uh, for lack of a better term, happenings on not only the Steemit platform, but any of the other platforms that access the blockchain, whether that be Steemit, whether that be ChainBB, whether that be uh, Busy. These are all different ways to access the, the Steemit blockchain or the Steam blockchain. Um, so it takes that information and basically puts it into a block. We see those blocks as witnesses, we verify them, and we add that to the chain. We verify this is good, and we add it to the chain. It's just a way to make information in a chronological order of how things happen on the platform. It's, it's actually pretty neat, and it's it seems very, very simple, but it is sort of changing the way the world is, is seeing how to collect and store information. It, it, it's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's such a new concept too, because when I was looking at the YouTube videos and they were explaining how the blockchain, when you make transaction, it produces a block. And then this block has to be processed in some shape or form and how it happens so much quicker than when you go to the bank and you're trying to make that exchange. So then, you know, you, you can go deeper into what all that means and how that all works. But just in the back of your mind, think of an open ledger and it just kind of keeps tracks of all the transaction. But then it begs the question as well as like, well, what gives cryptocurrency its value and where does that come from? And that was something I struggled with for a really long time because <laughs> it's always, it goes back to the concept of like, well, how does the value, the currency we currently have, how is that backed up and how it used to be gold, whatever, whatever. 
Well, it wasn't until Agrod posted what he posted today that really broke it down. And I don't know, it, something just clicked for me and it made sense. And so I'm going to put that in here. It's a very long post, but it's very interesting. And there's a video in there. And anything that has a video always makes me a little happier. So go watch it, go read it. And it kind of breaks it down. It makes it a little bit easier to understand as well. Oh, I'm interested. I, I've been completely out of the loop today, so I didn't get to see this at all. Mm-hmm. So what did you what did you take away from this, Kubi? Basic, oh, I'm sorry, Mi- Miss, Miss Kubi. <laughs> and hmm. well, it's it's funny because I've heard it said a million times in a different ways, but for some reason, when he said it, it made sense. But just like so, I live in the U.S. as you do, and the currency we use here is U.S. dollars. And the U.S. dollars used to be backed by gold. So you could go to the bank and give them $1 or $20 or whatever, what have you, and tell them, I don't want this anymore. Give me gold. So you would give them 20 and they would give you the equivalent of $20 in gold. Well, they started printing or whatever, however you want to get to it. They stopped backing it up by gold. And now they just print as much money. And then he goes in there and talks about the stats of how much money is actually be printing per day. So the money you hold today is going to buy less and less over time because of inflation and all of that and then he goes in and there's a a lovely video and how people use currencies and how to get these currencies and then he goes into the blockchains and cryptocurrencies and he goes you can you can think of the blockchain like a big ledger so that's where i got that from um but then think of cryptocurrencies as the value that people give it but there's a limit to it. So we do have miners who produce a certain amount of that certain coin that does eventually run out. And you can only trade that coin for as long as it exists. No, sorry, you, can, you can't create more of it once it's been fully mined. But the thing that I found most interesting and kind of hit home for me is it has a limit to it. Now, I don't understand how people can still be mining Bitcoin because it just seems like how much of a Bitcoin can you possibly mine if every time you mine one, it produces one full Bitcoin and then you sell bits and pieces off of it. And then he kind of compares that to the stock market a little bit. And then he also goes into how you'll invest in stocks because you trust a group of specialists to invest on your behalf than you trust yourself. So investing in cryptocurrency is the same concept. You invest in it because you trust the platform and the group of experts to trade it more so than you trade yourself. Obviously, he explains a little bit better than I am, but I'm just kind of picking um, it apart a little bit from what I gained from it and his comparisons of it. Fascinating to me, though, after reading it, I did have a question. So I asked him, I said, well, if cryptocurrencies can be mined, can't anyone just create a new coin and then just mine it? And wouldn't that create the same problem of having multiple currencies and inflation because you have so much of it and it isn't necessarily backed by anything? Um, And his response was, although anyone can create a new coin and you can mine it, there are certain, there are ones that you trust more than others. And so to be weary of that and to do your research on the various coins that are more popular in the crypto world than others in order for you not to fall into these traps of false coins. Now, I don't know if that's going to answer all of your questions that you may have about it, but I thought it was an interesting read. And he does a really good job of comparing it, comparing it to the U.S. dollar and how we bank nowadays with it. Yeah, that's. I'm going to have to give this a good read afterwards and see what he has to say. It's a little much for me to digest while we're on air. Yeah. But uh, yeah, afterwards, I'm definitely going to read this one. Yeah, there's a lot more questions to be asked about it, but he does a really good job of breaking it down. And I think I understand a little bit more. I still have some questions, especially when he gets into the whole taxation thing, because from what I've read um, right now, we're tax exempt because it's within the market. But once you remove it from crypto or from the market into U.S. Miss Kuby, you're you're kind of cutting in and out on me here. Are you uh, are you holding down that push to talk nice and nice and Nice and good. Are you using push to talk? I'm not. I wonder if my internet's just acting funky. Hopefully it will stop acting funky. Does everyone else think I sound weird or is it just Shane? Because Lena said the same thing and then it was fine on Chew Girl's end. So I don't know. She sounds fine. Okay. So it must be my end where I'm, it sounds like she's sort of going and, and then you go to the yeah. ag road said, yeah, that's what I'm <laughs> Funny. Yeah. But uh, as I was saying, it, With taxation, I don't understand how taxation plays a role in cryptocurrency because I don't think it does as of yet. 
um, True Girl did go into a little bit of her travels and how she avoids taxations and all the loopholes that there are right now from the various countries that she lives in. Lexicon, I'll put in there that the IRS does assume that you are guilty and you have to prove yourself innocent. So that's a little different, but there are different ways around that as well. Um, and then correct me if I'm wrong, Shane, but I, I think if what I've read is correct, that if you cash out less than 10000 US dollars from cryptocurrencies, then you don't necessarily have to claim it. I do not know the exact on that. I do know that um, apparently recently the IRS has talked to Coinbase about getting a list of their users that have done more than 20,000. Interesting. So, it, so uh, at this point, I do not know what the laws and regulations are. And I'm not sure if it's on a federal level or if it's going to be on a state level or what it's going to be when it finally does hit us. Don't get us wrong. Taxation will hit cryptocurrency here. There's no way it's it's going to stay out of out of government's hands too terribly long. Um, there may be a way to get around that a little easier than with um, credit and fiat money. But, yeah, it, they will get their hands in it one way or another. Yeah. And so, you know, everything that you read on Steam, it obviously is published by authors here and it's mostly their opinion. Some of them do put their sources on the facts that they find. But you just want to be weary of what state you're in, what city you're in, what country you're living in and what laws are applicable to that. Since it is all new, as I was mentioning before with True Girl, there are a lot of loopholes to the system right now. And I think that's why I'm most nervous about exchanging SBD and Steam into cash because of the whole taxation i'm not exactly sure how to work around there um which now it must be the best time to cash out because there aren't really anything to hold you to it um and until presidents <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i'm good? sorry i just i just saw clay's comment <laughs> i do not consent to be taxed by a system that i'm not using <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that. I am very curious to know how it all works. Um, and as I mentioned before, guys, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if we're talking over your head, be patient, be patient. We've been on the platform for a little while, so some of this makes more sense to us than others. But trust me, sometimes people will start talking like Rondon and Lexicon, and it just goes right over my head. I was like, I have no idea. I, I just barely do my taxes and survive that, so I have no idea what you're talking about. But if you learn a little bit every day and you digest it a little bit at a time, it will make more sense over time and that's what we're here to do it to help you with it and so do you have anything else uh shane that you wanted to go over about the basics of wallet or anything else that you'd like to touch base on no just those were the absolute basics that i wanted to talk about tonight um there, there are some other things in there like your keys that you want to make sure that you can find that through your wallet as well um always have a backup of your key always keep your master password private don't use it for anything. Write it down if you have to. Um, use your private keys only if you have to. Um, and that's like, a good point. And yes. why don't you tell us why is it a bad idea to have your master password saved on your browser? Well, because there are many malicious sites out there. Um, and there are bad people that are always trying to get into your system at one point or another. And if it's saved in your browser, you'll, if, if you do a read around the news, you'll always see how there are always exploits that are found in browsers. And the people that are looking for passwords know this. So they know a lot of people like to store their passwords in browsers. And it's easy pickings for a lot of them to come in, grab your master password, and next thing you know, you're wiped out with no real recourse. So keep the master passwords as private as you possibly can. Keep them out of your browser. Don't save them in your browser. I know it's a pain in the butt. Um, I, I know those long, long passwords are a pain, but you're safer doing it that way than just letting, whether, whether it be Chrome or ooh, Internet Explorer or any of the others, save it for you. Now, that, that begs the question, why does eSteam ask for a private key? That's exactly what I was going to bring up. Thank you so much, Dflo, for asking that. eSteam asks for a private key is because that is an actual third-party application that sort of posts on your behalf. Um, so they need your private key so that they can access your, your account on the blockchain 
through their app. So whenever some of these are asking for private keys, it's so that they can access things on your behalf. Um, you'll see that with Steam Voter. You'll see it with, um, well, Busy. Any of the condensers to log in, um, we'll, we'll ask for, for private keys. Now, when you delegate or you're asked to delegate, and if you're using it through MSP and our tool, it does ask you for one of your private keys as well. What are the dangers of putting that there? The dangers are, I mean, it, it's nothing's going to be 100% safe. Um, I do know that Steam Connect, which is the app that is mostly used for delegation, does not store the key. They're just using it to pass through to make a connection saying that, yes, this person has permission to do what we want to do with this account. Um, uh, so they will ask for the password. It's as safe as using a private key can be, which is not 100%, but it's safer than just giving it out at random. And um, also, if you do the, any sort of financial trading, that's the same password that you use, correct? I, I'm sorry, say again, Miss so Elizabeth? When you're using, when you're trading any other things that require your wallet, you do need that same password. It's two different passwords, the posting than the one that you use for financial trading. That's correct. That's correct. So, which you don't think about because on your Steemit, you log in with your master password that allows you to do all of it. However, if you are just using your posting one to post and comment and upvote and do all that, but then if you decide to do any transfers in your wallet, it does ask for a different password, not your master key, although you can use that one. But that other key that you use is the same one that we ask for when doing the delegation. So it's, it's the same concept with that because I know a couple of people feel a little weary about it. Well, Dflow is asking if it's safe. eSteam, it asks for private active. Um, I can tell you eSteam is is safe. It is run by a very well-respected witness. Um, Good Karma is the witness that runs eSteam, and he has been at the top three or four witnesses, well, at least since I've been on here, so at least six months probably longer than that. And uh, it, it's as safe as it can be. I mean, eSteam is well-respected. Good Karma is well-respected. Um, I haven't heard any problems with eSteam. Um, exactly. Good Karma ain't trying to get no bad karma. Um, <laughs> what, a, good, what are the odds of that? Good, good Karma is a top witness here. Top witnesses um, make quite a bit of steam quite a bit of steam power. Uh, it's it's in his best interest to make something as safe as possible. If he wouldn't, if eSteam was unsafe, you'd be sure that we would have heard about it and that good karma would not be on that list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Oh, hi. Here's here's a new person, Crystal Pacio 30 That person is new. And I noticed that uh, you've already got to him. <laughs> yeah. Miss Elizabeth, come on, Shane, you got this. You're not Hey, Scaredy and Unit Whisper here. Hi, guys. They're super excited. And then, and then I missed, while we were talking about taxation earlier, M. Sus said, as far as I know, that's not true. Um, and I don't know what you're talking about not being true. If you want to type in there so I can get a, a better idea of what, what is or isn't true, I would, I'd appreciate it. Absolutely. Now I am going to go ahead and end the recording for this version of the Middle University radio session where we talk about the basics of the wallet. Thank you, Shane, for finally making it out and explaining that all to us. But we are going to end this session here, or at least the recording. We will keep chatting afterwards. I just want to uh, end it here before we start talking about other topics not always so related. Say goodbye, Shane. Aww. Bye, Shane. <laughs> <laughs>